So welcome everyone to my new occasional series which I've decided to call Saturday Secrets. Hi everyone, I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio which are easy for you to do too. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. This is going to be all about how to paint in watercolour and uh, I'm going to show you some of the secrets that I've discovered over the years and I've been painting more decades than I care to remember. So um, we've done a few things over the years. Um, I'm going to be talking a lot about this book, The 365 Days of Art. I'm going to show you some of the things that I've done in it. And if you're interested um, in seeing everything I've done up to page, uh, I'm on day 70 now, I'm going to be doing a complete rundown on all the paintings that I've done, if you can call them paintings, um, on my membership, either YouTube or Patreon membership. I'm going to put a video up there in a day or two, going over all of those paintings quickly and showing you just how um, you can benefit from this book, should you decide to buy it by Lorna Scobie, and I love it. Um, I'm not in my normal studio today. I'm on holiday in England. I'm in Canterbury. And so I'm working on the kitchen table, which is not easy because I only brought a minimal amount of things with me to work with and immediately found that everything I wanted to use, I'd left it behind, but that's the way it goes. And um, so what I've got for a palette, um, this is a, a little doodly sketch that I did inspired by this book, by the way, and I just put it there for the sake of the photograph. Um, I'm using a, a dinner plate. I hope the lady who owns this house doesn't mind, but I've laid out here all of the colours in my A Gallo set because I love these colours, but I do find the palette format really inhibiting. I have to say, I hate it. I've never liked that way of painting. I prefer to use a big palette like this. And if you haven't got a big palette, plastic one, and you've only got this kind of thing, you know, this is okay, but you would be better off using a big china plate from the back of the cupboard that you don't normally use anyway. And I don't normally have all the colours out. I just put them all out so that I can look at this and see what colour. I mean, for example, we've got here four dark shades there and you can barely see what they are. I have absolutely no idea. You can use this, but when you're trying to paint um, expressively, to have to say, oh, hang on a minute, that's one, that's one I want, uh, in done thrown blue. Oh yeah, that's right at the end there. I'll pick up a bit of that and activate it and etc. etc. It just drives me bonkers. Can't cope with that. So the way I do it, and that doesn't mean to say everyone has to, but it's just a thought, I use my plate or my palette and I wet whatever it is I want to use and I just drag it into the middle there a bit and, uh, and work with that or that. And I'd make a nice grey if I mix those two together. And then you paint from there. And when you need more, you just go to your palette, wet the paint, pick up a bit more and add it to your reservoir there. I think you've all seen me using my butcher's tray. And that's the ideal one where you squeeze the paints out around the outside and you use that as a reservoir and you draw it into the middle and you get lots of accidental colour mixes which are all absolutely lovely. So that's enough rabbiting on about palettes. So I'll move that over there <coughs> and I want to now talk about this book. Every day I have to come up with a new idea. And um, so I've been looking at new books that I haven't come across before. And these books are being very helpful in inspiring me and making me do different things to what I used to do. And my style of painting has, has changed beyond recognition since I've been do doing this channel. And I have to say that Lorna Scobie is responsible for some of that. I don't paint like her, but she has opened a few doors into the relaxing aspect of not painting accurately <clears throat> or anything like accurately. So if you work your way through this book, and I know some of you have got it, so that's why I wanted to talk about it and show you some of the things that I've done. Um, here we have my very first effort. I was afraid of spoiling the paper because I thought if I put water on it, it's going to buckle and do all sorts of awful things. So I picked up a, a pen, one of my um, liners, fine liners, which is here. 
these. This is a Stettler pigment liner. And I drew what happened to be in front of me, which was the head of a leek, the flower of which had gone to seed. And I did it all very nyin, 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 and, you know, ah. And then I thought, oh, come on, grow up. It's only a piece of paper. It has no need to be preserved for posterity. So I went back to number two and I drew a, th a few leaves. And then I delicately tried out a little bit of paint. And I thought, ooh, okay, that's all right. And it, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't react badly at all. It's actually quite nice. So the next page I did was this one. And Lorna had kindly put in some shapeless butterflies. And the idea is to embellish them, make them, well, she says, create a page of beautiful overlapping butterflies. So she printed a few, then I had to add some, and then I had to embellish them, I thought, because, so that was nice. And that was where all the embellishment started, really, that we've been doing over the last few weeks um, on here, the embellished cats and birds and so on and so forth. So that was a complete break with my personal hang-ups. And very, very glad I am of it too. On this page, she says, fill the page with guinea pigs or other little animals. So, of course, not being very imaginative, I, I drew guinea pigs. And I realised, although I would recognise a guinea pig if I bumped into one, I wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't like to say that I knew exactly what they looked like. So that was interesting. We ended up with some blobs with legs. And uh, that was fun. And then the next page, there were some little trees down the bottom here. And she said, complete the picture. So I made all the trees bigger and uh, much more um, relaxed. And I added these ones at the end. They were completely, completely mine. And that was really nice to do. And then the next one I wanted to show you was this one. She has put these colours up top here. And I tried using my brush pens, the ones that are full of paint from Poetique, um, to match. So it's a good exercise in colour matching, you know, have I actually got this green and purple and so on. And uh, so I ended up with this lovely free design of, of water, really, which I was quite pleased with. And then this is a completely different exercise. This one, this is her drawing of a leaf. And my challenge was to get as close, I set the challenge for myself, she doesn't insist that you do that. I had to draw it and colour it in exactly the same as that. So that was what I did. And then um, I quite like this one. There were, there were a few little bees here and I added my own bees and a flower to that one. You could do anything. Uh, and this is fun. This was mostly just some blue circles and you had to embellish it and I was quite happy with that because that's completely different from anything I've ever done before. And you'll see echoes of these um, inspirations in some of the videos that you've been watching recently. Um, and then she had done this parrot, a grey parrot, and I constructed this out of memory and quite enjoyed that. So I should go and have a look at the real parrot sometime and we might see what they really look like. And then finally, I'll show you this page. This is Draw a Landscape. So I played around with just oh, whatever. Out of that came the little landscapes that I've been showing you recently and one that I'm going to do again soon. So this was where that idea came from. And then here we've got Turn These Blobs Into Animals. So I've had a brown fine liner and I made a tortoise and a sheep and an owl and so on and so forth. And then on this page, I did, ignored her prompt completely. This was a blank page. So I just did cat faces. And I was practicing cat faces because I was doing some videos on cats and I wanted to get a cute face. So, you know, some of them are ugly, some of them are cute. And this is a video I've done, but I'm not going to show it to you because I didn't do it very well. I will do it again and I'll show you that one. Uh, landscape there. These golden eggs are on a on a short and uh, practicing for the leaves and la di da. And so I'm on page 67 today. And so today I'm going to paint this sheep, which I'm going to do in the same style that we did the six sheep the other day. And what I've got here is 
too big of a brush. Let's try this one. This is a five, I think. Nope, seven. Um, when I'm trying to choose what size of brush I do, I've realized that recently, I've realized that I tend to sort of lay it next to the thing I'm going to be painting and see whether I think it's going to be the right size. I'm not sure about that. I might go for the what is actually the five. That, yes, I think that's probably going to be big enough. I've got, as I said, I'm using the kitchen table in this Airbnb and um, I've got my glass of water. I don't normally use a glass, but this is a beer glass, pint glass, full of hard water from the Kentish Chalk Hills. And um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, I'm standing on a, a sort of kitchen cloth there so that I can A, dry my brush on it as I take it out of the water and B, it will stop any marks from marking the ladies' table. So this is going to be a um, quick and easy sheep. And I'm going to pick up some green because I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of sheep are green. And um, that was a joke. I don't know if you can hear the wind in the background. It's very windy today. So I'm just dropping the paint in. This is a mixture of two greens. I'll mention the colours in the description below. And I'm just painting around the face of my little sheepy peep. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear the wind. It's windy and I've got the door open, which is a bit drafty, but I thought you might like to hear the sound of the Kentish wind. Just drawing, drawing with the brush. Change the colour a little bit, put a little bit more blue. Whoops, never mind, go away. A little bit more blue on one side, perhaps, but this is a kind of cartoony sort of sheep. You probably have seen the video of six sheep in a little heap that we did a while back. There we are, so there's the fleece of the sheep. And we'll give her Um, green ears. And she wants kind of light beige horns. Um, I'm using draw well brushes which come from Japan and they're handmade by Mr. Mayami and he will happily send you brushes. He charges approximately $30 for shipping, no matter how many you get. They're about $2 each, even for this um, beautiful quality. These are the Maestro. I normally use the Golden. This is Series 1.2, 1-2, Golden Nylon. And I've, ne I've got about 200 brushes at home, that I've accumulated over the years, and I've never come across one as good as these draw well brushes. So um, if you are in the mood for investing in new brushes, uh, you can't do worse than that. You can't do better than that, sorry. <laughs> um, you might have to wait a few weeks for them to come, but you can send him an email and he will reply. And the prices in yen look horrifically high because it's like, you know, 500 yen for one brush. But when you do the conversion, you'll find out that it's next to nothing, practically free. Um, so I heartily recommend them. When I started using them 20 years ago, those brushes, it improved my painting, I think, hugely. Uh, so I've never gone back to anything else. Now I'm going to look for a dry uh, fine liner. This is, it's got the wrong lid. Oh no, it's 0.5. Okay. That might be a bit thick. Um, point two, let's try point two. Yeah, that'll be all right. So I expect you can see from what um, uh, from from what I've been saying that this book has 
been very important to me. Now I'm just drawing around the horns and I'm going to draw around the ears with my pen and then I'm going to pop in the eyes just a, a nice oval for each eye and we'll give her sort of nice quizzical eyebrows a little nose a little mouth so there we are and then down here we will pop in a little flower like that and then the fun bit you prepared your um, background so just give her before I do the next exciting bit, I'm just going to give her some little pink cheeks. There we are. And uh, put a little bit of pink on her hair there. Then we'll grab our white. And we've got a couple of choices as to what we're going to embellish her with. Um, but I think she's going to just have polka dots. What do you think? I have to make sure this is dry. So you can do them in sort of little groups of five or six like that until you cover the whole sheep with dots. One of the things that I found recently, I think I said, did I already say this? That it's a good idea every now and again to get some new materials or a new book or something like that to work with because, you know, you don't want to get stuck in a rut. I certainly don't. And I've only got so much time left to be able to paint. So I need to explore as many things as I possibly can. You know, it's all very well when you're 30, you can sit around doing nothing for the next 30 years. By the time you get to be 60, you sort of feel the need to crack on. And uh, the funny thing about getting older is that you don't feel any older in the head. The brain, if anything, I think, and this is perhaps, I don't know whether everyone finds this, but I think my thinking process is younger than it ever was. I feel more um, creative than I was when I was younger, when I had a family to look after and so many things inhibiting me. Um, unfortunately, you're, you have limited time left and um, a limited amount of energy. It's very annoying. There's nothing you can do about it, of course. We'll give her some white knees. But uh, fight the good fight, as they say. Um, what was I going to say? I wanted to say, I recommend the Kirataki paints if you haven't got a set, they're brilliant. They're in my shop on um, Amazon, amazon.com slash shop slash Diane Anton Studio and the link below. Um, and you will find all sorts of materials there that I recommend. But I do like the Kirataki 48 pan set as a really good compromise between tubes, which not everybody likes, and these ridiculously small pans. They're a nice big pan, a good inch and a half, like size like that. Didn't bring them with me. Oh yes, I did, hang on, look. It's just like these, that size. Absolutely marvelous. I should do another video with these um, graphite colors soon because they're quite a lot of fun. They don't look like anything when they're in their containers, but as soon as you start putting them on paper, if you use plenty of water, they're quite exciting. So. It's a good idea to add something new to your armory every now and again, so as you keep on moving forward as fast as you possibly can. Um, another thing I was just thinking about is buy some cheap sketchbooks. Don't worry about expensive paper. It's inhibiting. Just paint on anything. Paint on toilet paper. Well, not quite perhaps, but you know, back of a cardboard box, anything, just paint. And finally, Please join our membership, our YouTube membership or Patreon, either one or the other. You can start from two pounds or two dollars or two euros. It's all the same to me. 
um, and you'll get a few extra things each month. But the main thing is why you're doing that is to support us because we need we need to eat occasionally, although I could do with losing a few pounds. Um, and that's our source of income. I don't get anything from anyone else except you. And you, capital Y, have been so incredibly generous over the last few last two years. Um, it's just made everything possible. And so we're hoping to continue to do this um, ad infinitum until I fall asleep one night and don't wake up in the morning. It's, sorry, it's because the Queen has died. We're all considering our mortality at the moment, aren't we? Um, and the other thing, finally, we are, we've had a few fundraising videos up for a while. And the fundraising video is when we um, offer you the opportunity to donate to a charity that we've chosen. And we're going to start expanding that and putting new charities on our videos. It doesn't cost you anything. doesn't mean you have to pay. But if you feel like supporting a cat charity, a dog charity, they're all American official non-profit 501 charities. And I don't understand how it works in America, but you will know. Uh, unfortunately, we can't do it with any English charities at the moment. But um, we will when they set it up on YouTube. And um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so that is something that we want to do because, well, I'm a great supporter. We've, we used to do, you know, guide dogs for the blind and we're members of Howlitz, which is something in England that's a, wild, a wildlife um, preservation um, place. I think, uh, who was it? Was it? Oh, I can't remember the name of the person that started it. But anyway, it's... Um, that's here at the Canterbury, and we give them a donation every month. Um, we've done lots of things like that. I used to be a member of the RSPB, and you in America have um, the Audubon, and we're going to put that on our list. And we've got um, National Cats Rescue and a, a you know, Kill Dog Charity as well and stuff like that. So you'll see that popping up, just in case you wonder what that is. That's what that is. And... Um, We'd be grateful for anything that you can spare to give to these charities, because as you know, that's the way the world works these days, isn't it? So there we are. Um, the sheep is finished, and I hope you enjoyed that. Let's just pop her up to say hi. Hello, I'm a sheep. Sheep, sheep. I'd make a nice card, wouldn't I? The prompt here was design a greetings card based on the natural world. Do you think that fits the prompt? Just about. Anyway, enough whittering, time to stop. And I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you again soon. Bye everybody. Bye bye.